Good Tuesday evening, Internet friends. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett. We are once again under a first alert weather warning tonight. We've seen some gusty winds across the region and some steady heavy rain throughout the day. And on top of that, those strange king tides. We're going to talk about the science behind that and why we don't expect that to be an issue overnight tonight or really again for a while. Here's what we're looking at as far as the potential goes tonight. Your first alert weather warning is showing that we have got conditions until about one o'clock in the morning that are going to be not so great. But once this low pressure system moves on, we will start to see that back off. But in the meantime, gusty winds and low level flooding still an issue. Mudslide potential still a thing because, well, we've been seeing lots of rain and those gusty winds kind of blowing the trees around. Power outages and flooding and pooling are still a possibility overnight tonight. But as I mentioned earlier, it looks like conditions should improve starting on Wednesday. Here's a live look from SeaTac where we're not seeing as many raindrops as we're seeing on the lens earlier tonight, but still seeing some camera rock out there. We've seen some very gusty winds. High wind warning in effect for everything you see in that ugly yellow mustard color until 1 a.m. on Wednesday. Pretty much all of Puget Sound, including Everett, Tacoma, Bremerton. Sustained winds that have been about 30, 40 miles an hour and gusts up to 60 are still a possibility until about midnight. The other part is all of that green. That is a coastal flood warning. That was that king tide that we saw earlier today where we saw some crazy high tides across the region actually push some jellyfish up into streets in some spots. That'll back off overnight tonight. Now we're changing our focus as that system moves in and snow levels are dropping. A winter weather advisory is in place for the mountains until 10 a.m. on Wednesday. We're seeing snow levels dropping down to about 2,000 feet. Winds could get up to about 60 miles an hour in the passes and snowfall rates will be about an inch an hour overnight tonight, so we'll take a look at that in a moment too. Let me start you off with the big picture of the GO-17 satellite. A little difficult to see now. The low pressure system made landfall earlier today and was right on top of us. That was a big part of the story because the central pressure of that dropped down to a very low place. So normally when we're talking about king tides, it's a lunar thing. I took a look. The next full moon is until about the first week of January, so we're about 10, 11 days away from that. This was something entirely possible. This low pressure was so low that it was actually pulling the water, if that makes any sense to you. Warm air, normally associated with high pressure, drives everything down and keeps cloud cover away. Low pressure kind of pulls everything towards it and then upwards, and that's exactly what happens. So to put that in a new Merit kind of thing. Atmospheric pressure, what we look at are millibars. You know, we talk about barometric pressure all the time. Well, normal sea pressure on a benign, non stormy day is about 1,013.25 millibars. Our average hurricane, which is of an enhanced low pressure system, is about 950 millibars. The reading that we got from that low today was about 966 millibars. So it was about 16 millibars above your standard hurricane. So, yeah, if we felt some gusty winds today, that's exactly why we felt them. Take a look across the Seattle Metro, it is right about 9 p.m. on Tuesday night. Temperatures are in the mid 40s and look at that. Southwesterly winds coming in about 28 miles an hour and we've seen some big gusts over the last hour or so. As we take a look at satellite and radar, there are two places where it's been raining pretty heavily and steadily throughout the day. The Pacific Northwest and down towards Los Angeles and San Diego where they've been tapping into some pretty abundant moisture. Unfortunately, it's too much too soon for them. They're getting some flooding issues there, but it is helping with the drought. Now, taking a look, we've got a little bit of convergence setting up shop between Seattle and Everett, which kind of indicates that things are starting to normalize. We're starting to see that wind coming in in a more zonal type flow, which is a really fancy way of saying that it's just coming from west to east. So we're getting normal convergence like we normally do over top of Snohomish County. We've seen some big gusts, so take a look at that. 52 miles an hour within the last hour in Seattle, 40 out towards the coast, and even some 20s in places like Port Angeles and Olympia. Let me back up real quick here and show you everything you see in purple that's where we're seeing winds in excess of 50 miles an hour so even off towards the east and the southeastern portion of the state Walla Walla and Tri-Cities have had gusts in excess of 50 miles an hour within the last hour and even Pullman has seen gusts up to about 40. Forecasted wind gusts as we go through the rest of the night will favor south sound and then they'll start to back off right around 1 a.m. when that warning is set to expire there. Still going to be breezy but just won't be as gusty as it's been and the later that it gets the calmer it becomes. So by the time we get to about 6 a.m. on Wednesday, expecting some southerly flow that again will be breezy, but not particularly gusty and not particularly dangerous. Take a look at future radar. We'll see that convergence just give one last hurrah over top of Snohomish County and drive some snow up towards
towards Stevens Pass. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. 830 in the morning, we'll still see some convergence. It'll be driving some snow up towards the passes. But look at this. As we progress through the day on Wednesday, this is 430. So right around the time the sun is setting, yeah, we're going to see some clear skies and possibly a sunset. We'll get a nice little break out of the deal before a new system pushes in on Thursday morning. First band won't be that big of a deal, but it looks like that second band that pushes late Thursday into Friday morning has got some oomph behind it, and it looks like there'll be some leftovers that we'll take into the day on Friday. Snow levels dropping. In fact, we were up around, what, 8,000 feet a couple days ago. We started off at 5,500 feet this morning, so 3,000 feet tonight, 2,000 feet on Wednesday morning, and it looks like we're going to stay either at or below pass level as we go into the final days of 2022. So if you are planning on heading up into the mountains, we've already seen abundant snow tonight. Looks like we'll pick up about another four or five inches in Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass. Looks like Baker will get some accumulations, and even Crystal and White Pass will get on the scoreboard there as well. As we move towards the weekend, it looks like it gets even better. So if Santa brought you some new skis or a snowboard, you're going to get out and enjoy those over the next couple of days. The silver lining to all this, at least it's not cold anymore. Temperatures riding in the mid 40s as we go through the day on Wednesday. And your seven day forecast shows some sun breaks and some drier conditions on Wednesday. We go back into the rain business again Thursday and Friday, but I am tracking some high pressure that will build across the region that will warm us up. Well, just if nothing else, kind of keep us in a good space as we go towards New Year's Eve. So if you are planning on joining us for the festivities at the Space Needle, we got fireworks, we got lasers, we got drones, and if you don't want to go out, you can catch it all here live on King5 or King5.com. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Everett on Tuesday evening. Stay dry, stay safe, and keep looking up.